and welcome to another edition of the Health Research Report this 22nd, February 2013, and we have four articles to cover. First one, spinal cord severed may not be so permanent after all. Pretty interesting, at least for animals. Number two, food and acne. What you've been told by the major establishment has been wrong for the past five decades. So, sorry, and sorry. Three, all right, scientists unveil secret of important natural bio antibiotic, which in short means you better go run and sweat. Number four, loud concerts, loud music, loud noises. There may be some protection against that. All right, to start off with spinal sever cord. Off to the start. Walking again after spinal injury, sprinting, climbing upstairs, avoiding obstacles, after a couple of weeks is something called neuro rehabilitation. I like to see some advanced work on this. I don't know why they take so long. If it works, it works. Give it a shot. What do you got to lose? Well, in the Journal of Science, what they came out with is there was a report, and it's in French, so I cannot produce the pronounce properly the uh, Polytechnic Institute, which it came out of reported that rats in a lab not only voluntarily initiating walking a gait remember the spinal cords are severed and now they're walking but they were sprinting climbing upstairs avoiding obstacles after how long just a couple of weeks in what's called neural rehabilitation, which is a combination of robotic harness and electrochemical stimulation. This is also presented at the 2013 meeting of American Association of Advancement of Science in Boston. They said they explained how he and his colleagues are interfacing the central nervous system with stretchable spinal electro electrode arrays controlled smart stimulation logarithms combined with novel robotic rehabilitation and they show a video, which I'll link down at the bottom here after I'm done with this report. It shows a video of completely paralyzed rats voluntarily moving after only weeks of treatment. This research program has potential to develop effective treatment paradigms for rehabilitating individuals with severe spinal cord injury for whom current rehabilitative treatments do not restore the ability to stand or walk. I don't know how long it is. Usually the spinal cord can sometimes heal itself shortly after injury, sometimes a good prednisone to prevent the uh, chelating of the nerve fibers. But if this can be done for people that have been paralyzed for a long period of time to regenerate the spinal uh, cord, what the heck? Why wait two years? Start doing it now. What do they got to lose? They already lost the ability to walk or move. Do it now. Paraplegics? Why not? But whatever it is, came out, science moves forward. I don't think you should be having to wait two years for this to be researched more. All right, food, dairy, and acne. For years, you've been told it makes no difference. It's all hormones. It's just puberty. Diet has nothing to do with acne. Well, oh, sorry. Apologize about that. Accutane you had to take for a while, but, you know, what the heck. A little suicidal thoughts here and there from medications. I guess overrode the ability to actually look at the real reasons that may be for acne. Well, out of the Journal of the Academy of Manure Nutrition and Dietetics Report, they discovered that there's an increasing evidence between the connection of diet and acne, particularly from high glycemic low diets. What's that? Sugar, soda, refined flours and starches, and dairy products. Now, the argument in regards to dairy products, I don't know whether they mean pasteurized or unpasteurized. Obviously, when you pasteurize dairy, you change its form dramatically in its bacterial makeup. Unpasteurized raw colostrum, things like that, may actually are good for the skin. So again, that's debatable later on. They said what happened in the 1960s. S they tried to disassociate diet from acne. I guess they had two major studies out there, and once those two major studies were done in the 1960s, case was closed for the next five decades. Well, case reopened. Culling information from studies between 1960 and 2012, the investigated diet, acne investigators, acne investigators, compiled data for a number of study characteristics including 
Reference Design, Participants, Intervention Design. Primary Outcome, Results and Conclusions, Core Correct Considerations and Limitations, in which they conclude that the high glycemic, low diets, and frequent dairy consumption are the leading factors establishing the link between diet and acne. So there is hope for you out there, kids or adults, which are worried about having healthy skin and can't seem to do anything and don't want to take prescription drugs. Try getting off the soda, the sweets, the sugars. The same thing your parents have been telling you for freaking years, but doctors have been telling you, no, it doesn't make a difference. Well, guess what? Your parents are right. Unless they're a doctor. Number three. Secrets unveil... Secrets. Scientists unveil secrets from important natural antibiotic. That natural antibiotic is good against tuberculosis, mycobacterium tuberculosis, sorry, staphylococcus aureus and fungi and everything else. That antibiotic which your body produces is sweat. It's called dermacidin. Der, D-E-R-M-C-I-D-I-N. Dermacidin, which I know I'm not pronouncing properly. The results can contribute to the development of new antibiotics because obviously the one you have you can't make any money off of so you got to find a way to market sweat. So, yeah. Alright. New antibiotics that control multi-resistant bacteria published in the National Academy of Sciences. The team discovered that dermacidin can adapt to extremely variable types of membranes. Scientists say this could explain why dermacidin, sweat, in such an efficient broad-spectrum antibiotic, able to fend off bacteria and fungi at the same time. Wow, by two at once. Not just one in bacteria, but multiple bacteria and tons of fungi. So you could jump into a, a field of dirty mushrooms. The compound is active against many well-known pathogens, as we said, tuberculosis, staph, and da-da-da-da. Antibiotics are not only available by prescription. Well, obviously, someday someone would love to be able to patent sweat, so this is probably where this is heading towards. So don't sweat without having to pay a royalty. Our own bodies produce efficient substances to fend off bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Now that we know in detail how these natural antibiotics work, we can use them to help develop infection-fighting drugs that are more effective than conventional antibiotics. Or you can just sweat. Your call. I don't know. Antibiotics? Sweating? Yeah, I understand. All right. Hearing. If I speak too loud, you should pick some of this up. It's called resveratrol, the same stuff in wine. So it'd be interesting. The people that drink, maybe they have better hearing over time. This was done from Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. Our latest study focused on resveratrol and its effects in bioinflammation, the body's response to injury, and something that is believed to be the cause of many health problems, including Alzheimer's disease, cancer, aging, and hearing loss. So if you're aging, it's because you've got bioinflammation. But resveratrol has been shown to be an anti-aging substance. So maybe this is how it does it. Resveratrol is a very powerful chemical found in wine. That's why you shouldn't drink so much. That seems to protect against the body's inflammation process as it relates to aging, cognition, and hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss... Th oh, red wine only. Not white wine. Noise-induced hearing loss not only impacts a person's ability to hear, but it can cause difficulties with sleep and communication and even raises the risk for heart disease by increasing a person's blood pressure, lipids, and blood sugar. Interesting. You just thought you just couldn't hear, and that's all it made a difference with. Well, obviously, it encompasses far more than anticipated. How does it do this? By working with reactive oxygen species, by reducing them down, have a little cox too, but about here it goes. The study reveals that acoustic overstimulation, like talking too much and too loud, Cause a time-dependent upregulation of COX-2 protein expression. And resveratrol significantly reduces reactive oxygen species formation, inhibits COX-2 expression, and reduces noise-induced hearing loss following noise exposure in rats. Yeah, we've saved the hearing in rats. Rats can walk after we hurt the spinal cords. We cured cancer in rats about a million times, so we should have the healthiest rats in the world here in the United States. We shouldn't have been giving animals resveratrol. We reduce the amount of hearing and cognitive decline. And eventually, they'll be smarter than us, too. So, that's it for this health research report. 22nd of February, 2013. I will link that spinal cord injury one. I find that to be quite fascinating and would really, really, 
really like to see uh, research moved on that a little faster. And again, too, for you kids out there, stop eating sugar and stuff. Watch your skin clear up. And thank you very much once again, and I'll catch you guys next week.